Welcome to an Alaska homestead where we're becoming more self-sufficient on a remote island in southeast Alaska. Missing a chicken. I guess she's trying to keep warm, huh? There she is, isn't it? Yep. Oh, we've got a hen that's going through a full molt right now, and she is not happy. So we're trying to give her some vitamin water and some grubs to... And the other one who's molting just drank some. But she's so upset that she won't come over. Hey, Miss Daisy. You got some grubs to throw out? I do. So she's got a little partial molt going on, but Poor Miss Daisy in the back. She she has got a full blown molt. She's lost all of her feathers. And we're hitting right into the, we're just peaking at 30 degrees for our highs right now. She's really weak though. You see her kind of stumbling around. Now Miss Daisy's one of our stronger birds. She's either first or second place in the pecking order. And we don't want to lose her, but she's having a rough go of it right now. And she's been getting picked on since she's got all of her feathers gone, you know. So we, like I said, we've been giving her some, we're giving her grubs right now and some, putting some vitamin water in here for them to drink or for her to drink, but. It's not a good time to be molting. So she just kind of goes over there in the corner or she'll go back, yeah, she's going back in that box now, so. Maybe we'll put some straw or a blanket over the top of that box, and then uh, um, that way it'll keep that box insulated too. Yeah, we can put some more straw in there for And then sure. maybe, maybe she'll, um, she'll hunker down in there during the day, and then when all the other chickens come up at night, she can um, come out and get on the roost with them. I'll have to kick her out though. Yeah, but <laughs> she's definitely having a rough, a rough time right now. But we don't want to bring her inside because then that that doesn't then it's hard for us to get her back outside once she's um, um, reasons acclimation acclimation and the other thing is you don't want to be picking them up which I tried doing and it sounded like somebody was getting murdered and the third reason then would be because once you change up their uh, pecking order if you take her out and then reintroduce her yeah with her not having any feathers it would be brutal what they do to her so I don't want to do that either so we're just doing the best we can right now yeah look the other one is, 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 we, could just, we could get her to drink I would be happy but she won't come over <laughs> so we've also just left this light on in here we've shut them all in here just to kind of um, keep this area warmed up and keep that area inside there a little warmer. That's the best that that's the best that we can do right now. So we're crossing our fingers that she makes it through this um, little cold spell we got going on. And then in a, about four or five days, it's supposed to start warming up into the mid thirties again. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see if I can maybe find some cracked corn inside and see if I can throw some of that in there. Um, I believe that. If you feed them cracked corn before they go to sleep, that it helps them um, 
I think it takes longer to digest. So their body, their metabolism is working to digest the food, and it uh, keeps their body, warm. yeah, their body yeah, temperature so warmer. Let's see if I can find some in there. We're having a pretty high tide. Today's tide is uh, 20 foot, and the wind's blowing in from behind us, so we're not getting hardly any waves in front of us right now. We always enjoy not um, not getting hounded by the by the wind. All right, so we found the little water from from when they were chicks, and um, we're gonna stick that in there because the little the little mason jar that we had was just um, it was yeah they'll just step on it and knock it over. So we decided not to even mess with that, and that uh, we're gonna use this guy right here slide it in there and hopefully she'll come out and drink some of this water. Where are you going? Sweetie pie, she knows. She's like, I love this vitamin water. So we're going to go for the flip and then the stick. Flip and stick. Sweetie Pie knows what's up. She's like, yeah, she, I'll, I'll take some of that action. She loves the... All day long. Mm. So hopefully the only downside to doing it this way is, is um, obviously this water is probably going to freeze quicker than, than the water that's got the heater underneath it, but it'll allow them a little chance to get something. We'll come back down here in an hour or so and check it and maybe bring it inside, warm it up, and then bring it back outside here. Look at that regal princess up there. Oh, are you a regal princess, huh? All right, I'm gonna go get that towel and bring that towel down here and kick my boots off. There you go. Hopefully that'll isolate some drafts so when she goes inside her little, uh, her little nesting box, she's gonna make a mess pooping in it, but that's better than her freezing to death. Oh, that's a nice chopping block. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> it washed up on the beach, so we drug it up here. Oh, the sad thing is, is um, you can't see uh, your your dad's antlers. No, not real good. No. There, there's the moose rack. There's the old woodshed. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's our. Uh water we dug a hole there put the trash can in to try and keep our water from freezing this winter down in the ground and put a sty big styrofoam cover on it so that it would uh insulate it nice yeah. and so far we've so been far, down, in down, down in the 20s, 20s yeah and it's still yeah, it's still all water nice so it's 9 14 in the morning the sun is over there That's the hassle of having a cabin that faces north. Northeast. Northeast. Yeah, yeah we got nothing. No sun over here. No garden. The sun, the sun came up and now it's now it's, it's gone. gone. <laughs> yeah, no garden for us. Yeah, that is solar. true. It'd be hard to grow a garden. Mm -hmm. No solar. But the good thing is, is in the summer the sun comes up right here. Yeah, you, more this way. Yeah. We get, yeah, and we does it just morning. kind of go like that? It just kind of goes. Oh, does it? That way still, yeah. So it go, it comes up here and then goes. Yeah. But it goes high up, so you still get a little Higher. sun. It yeah. doesn't go up like that. Or no. That yeah. It feels like, like it does at my place. I'm always like, oh, there's the sun. <laughs> no. The trees are too tall. Here's the deal. Uh, a couple weeks ago. We were having high winds and it was uh, freezing spray. So Brad and Victoria pulled the boat out of the water, but they don't have a tractor or anything to put it into the water. So we're gonna try to put, 
help them get it into the water, the four of us, just to manhandle it and push it down. It's on a slope, but there's rocks and all kinds of stuff uh, that is making it a little difficult. So we're going to see. And we got a 19 foot tide, so it should be, we should be able to push it down and we'll see. We'll see. That's what this is all about is seeing if we can get this thing back in the water. Because it's not easy with two people. No, we tried. So they, they um, had a come along that they they just tied around a tree and winched it up into the, you know, up out of the beach. But we're still in the high tide line, so but, it's not safe to leave. But it's, yeah, but the high tide here, it will still come up over the, and get the boat. So there's a, today's a 19 foot tide and then we've got a, few, a couple days of 20 foot tides. So that's why we're trying to get it in the water. Even though the temperatures are dropping down uh, below, th we're supposed to be in the 20s for the rest of the week. Yeah, we're hopefully gonna, we won't get freezing spray. We're gonna give away. We're gonna give it hell. So Brad's going to get a torch. W Raven's at escorting him, but the uh, the drain the drain hole there is uh, frozen up. So. He's got to go get that torch and, and heat this up enough so the water can drain out. <laughs> oh, I see the bottom. You can't get it in all the way because the bottom's... Uh... Almost. With the come alongs, you have to um, reset it. It's only got a, a few feet, like four or five feet of um, cable. So you have to wind it back up, lengthen, lengthen whatever you got it attached to, and then start rolling it back down. But we're getting close. There's the, there's the edge of the water there, and it's still coming up, so. Getting closer. All right, so we are getting really close. This is the last time we're going to be able to put a piece of wood in the water. So after that, it's just going to have to be pushing against the rocks, a bunch of heave ho uh, We'll see. We've got about another hour before we reach high tide. The problem with this trailer is, is though, it's got the, it's got the boat up really high. So uh, that means the, water, the trailer has to get in the water further before the boat will start to float. Uh, that's our biggest uh, concern is can we get it down far enough and have a tide come up high enough to get this thing floating. I lost it! Okay, this is one more push. That's what I got. Okay. So Vicky, what's the tide at? I don't know! My phone is buried and I'm wet!
All right, that's it. We got the trailer pulled back up out of the water. Bad and Victoria went around to the other side to put that uh, boat on their mooring. They and did uh, they did have a problem. Their big motor wouldn't start, so they just had to troll over with their kicker. We'll check in with them later to see how uh, everything went. Anyways, we're going to head back to the cabin and warm up.